your Bibles and turn to the book of James. <clears throat> I trust you've had a good week. Uh, cooler weather is on the way. I'm convinced of that. It'll be here any day. It's Texas. Probably the first or second week of October, it'll finally take a turn for actually cooler. So uh, if you're in mourning this morning, you'll get over it. Amen. Give it a few days. Uh, I've mentioned this. There's nothing worse than trying to study the Bible on one hand and follow Texas on the other. It's a uh, it's like scrambled eggs by the time you're done. And I'm not sure the, the spiritual aspect is always the best part of it. Uh, but uh, uh, we, do, we do talk about sports occasionally here. Amen. And uh, try not to dwell too much on it. But uh, we'll try to get to the spiritual aspect of things this morning. James chapter 1, if you would, please. Uh, simple verse, James chapter 1, verse 19. It says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, Slow to speak, slow to wrath. Why? For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Father, thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. Lord, you've been very good to us. And uh, Father, you've blessed this church abundantly. Thank you, Father, for your words, for your son. Thank you for each one here this morning. We know, Lord, you have something just, uh, just right for each of us this morning if we just simply be good listeners and learn to set aside the cares and affairs and the uh, things going on around us and try to focus lord on your word may you help us to focus help us to be better listeners lord and most importantly to you we pray for your hand of blessing not only on this class the others may christ have the chief seat we ask these things in jesus name amen now one thing about james 119 if you're paying any attention at all already is is it it says let every man in other words there's something in this lesson this morning for everybody. Everybody. Okay? And I'll give you a little test here just to tell you, or just, to, just, to, just to test a little bit. And I want you to think back to last week. Both well, those of you that, that were here last week, do you remember the Sunday school lesson? <laughs> well, Brother Doug, it wasn't really that powerful. No, do you remember the lesson? Now, if you want to take it one step further, do you remember the morning church service and the evening service? And this isn't to criticize as much as, think about this for a minute with me. By and large, most of us, and I'm at the head of the line, simply are poor listeners. Uh, if you've ever introduced yourself to somebody here, amen, that's uh, come into church and you ask them for their name and they give you their name, so help me, 30 minutes later, I have to ask somebody else, do you remember what so-and-so's name was, the visitors, amen, or the newcomers, or whoever? I, folks, there's people here today, I have to confess, I've known for years, I still can't tell you their first name. <gasps> no, we won't go into who, but it's just, that it's, there's something about this matter of listening. Um, look at me in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, if you would, please. Very quickly, Ecclesiastes chapter 5. We kid about listening, and we kid around about not hearing, and, and uh, uh, if you've been married for any length of time, you, you kid each other about how you simply just nod, but you didn't hear what the wife or the husband really said. If you're rearing children, after a while, you know, children come with a selector switch. After so many years, they just slowly turn the parents off or to mute, amen. And I'm afraid we get that way sometimes, not only with each other, but I think we can get that way with our Heavenly Father. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, look with me in verse 1 here. It says, keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Look what it says here. And be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. It says, be more ready to hear. Now, there's something about that. If you stop just for a second here, coming up to the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, be more ready to hear. God has something for each of us this morning if we just simply listen. Look with me in the book of Ezekiel. If you find the book of Ezekiel, there, there comes a point with God's people, and again, I'm going to put myself at the head of the line, but look with me in Ezekiel chapter 33, where if one's not careful, whether it's a Bible lesson, whether it's a Bible message, it just becomes just background to us after a while. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse number 30. Look here with the children of Israel in verse number 30 of Ezekiel chapter 33. It says, Also thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses. And they speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. They come unto thee as the people cometh, they sit before thee as my people, 
and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice, and can play well on an instrument, for they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come, then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. There comes a point, if you're not careful in your Christian service, in particular up at the house of the Lord, where it just becomes, this, well, that's neat. Does that be, it, well, that's a neat lesson. In fact, everything matched and everything went very smoothly and everything very well. Well, that, that's nice. That was a great Bible message. Amen. Boy, the man's an eloquent speaker. Amen. But after a while, it's, in a sense, it's more of a, it's kind of more of an entertainment. It's, 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 it filled a spot almost maybe emotionally for the day or for the week or whatever, but it becomes as just a song. Well, that was nice. And then I'll let me go back to what I was doing. Amen. Look with me in the book of Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Ezekiel is kind of more of an entertainment there. It gets to be, well, that, that, that's really nice. But Matthew chapter 13, if you would please, very quickly, Matthew 13. <clears throat> Just some examples of hearing or lack of hearing. Matthew chapter 13, if you would please, reading in verse number 13. Matthew 13, 13. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, see not, hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. Why? For this people's heart is waxed gross. Their ears are, look here, dull of hearing. Their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart and should be converted, and I should heal them. Now stop right there. After a while, if you're not careful, not only can the word of God become, well, that's entertaining, that's, that's really neat. The word of God, it can be, we simply, it's, you get dull of hearing. It's, it's um, uh, well, I've heard that before. Um, I'll, I'll take another one here. If you're not careful, church, Sunday school becomes, I'll say this carefully, boring. And you get, so you really, it's just, it's just you, you don't really listen. You don't really listen with intent of understanding. It's just kind of, it's just a dull process. You kind of just sit and do nothing with it. Now let me reiterate, it's incumbent upon the teacher, it's incumbent upon the preacher, those in the position of bringing the word of God, to put their shoulder to the plow, so to speak, and get into the word of God and pray over things, and what does God have, what does God want, what does God have for the people, what does God have for me as a teacher? To put our, our shoulder into it and get with it. Now, there is a habit, if you're not careful when you teach, and those of you that have or have, there's a ha if you're not careful, you want to get into entertaining. You want to be liked, you want to be accepted. We hate rejection. That's not the purpose of bringing a Bible message or not always the best way to do it. it. The word of God stands on its own, does it not? The word of God stands, it's incumbent upon each of us, even if you feel the teacher or the preachers, wow, they did a lousy job today, that was awfully, that was terrible, I could have done it better. Listen, if the word of God is brought, there's something in it for each of you. So if you're not careful, you get dull of hearing. Eh, you know, I've, I've heard that before, or that, that wasn't brought very well, and you, you, you don't learn. You leave today, you leave the services today, well, I didn't get anything out of it. No, now hold on a minute, amen? If the word of God is brought, there's something in it for you, amen? Be careful, because you're trifling with your heavenly father when it comes to the word of God. He'll deal with his servant if there's some things that need to be corrected there, and pray about that. Here's another one in Acts chapter number 7. Acts chapter 7. <clears throat> I have to admit, I, folks, let me, let me confess something. If you find yourself up here, or I, and I have for a little while, you wonder to yourself, is anybody listening? No, really, is anybody awake? Somebody, somebody's saying amen or something. Oh, somebody's awake. The, the left or the right, depending on where you're seated today, is awake. Or the, you know, well, Praise the Lord. One needs to be careful. It's not always all the outward or all the noise. Amen. Uh, I'm not one of those that does a lot of, lot of amening or a lot of things. That's fine. Some do. Amen. As they feel led of the Lord. But God has something for you here. 
and, and I'll suggest here in Acts chapter 7, this is another problem sometimes. It's Acts chapter 7. Look with me here uh, regarding Stephen. Acts seven fifty four. When they heard these things, Stephen is reviewing some things with them. They were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. He said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And then they cried out with a loud voice and look here and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet. Now look here, whose name was Saul. Now there were some people that day that stopped their ears. They didn't want to hear what God had to say. They didn't want to hear what Stephen had to say. We will not hear. But yet, if you look at this passage, somebody was listening. Who was that? Come on whose name was Saul. Not everybody stopped their ears. So here's the thing. Be careful if you're going to do this. Amen? Just be careful. You know, not everybody stopped their ears that day. Saul of Tarsus didn't. And you know who Saul of Tarsus, the Apostle Paul. Amen? So I have to be careful as a teacher, amen, that I bring the word as I feel led and, and, and do the best I can and trusting God to bless his word and God's people to take what's put out there. And it might not be used today, but maybe later on this week. Amen. I like uh, the brother's illustration. You remember the commercial when E.F. Hutton speaks? Remember the dead silence? Everybody leans forward. That's a good way to think about it when God speaks. Amen. It would benefit God's people to lean forward even closer to make sure they don't miss something. And I think about the word of God. These folks stop their ears. Now there's another area out here. Look with me in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4. I mentioned the entertainment part of uh, the flesh sometimes feels like it needs to entertain when, when a message is brought. And, and if we're not careful, the people love to have it so. Um, by the grace of God, I'm not up at the house of the Lord looking to be entertained. I'm not up at the house of the Lord by the grace of God uh, just to spend a happy-go-lucky time in the house of God. I need the word of God in my life. Even if, even if I look like I'm doing great, amen, I need the word of God in my life. I need that renewal process. I need the word of God to mold me and shape me and conform me to the image, more to the image of his son. Uh, I need a Bible message, a Bible lesson. Even when I don't think I do, I do. And you're gonna find, I, I tell you, this country is drifting and it has been drifting slowly to what I call a more entertainment driven service. God help us, I don't feel that's gotten into Trinity, but so help me, it will, I, you say, no, brother Doug, Stuff happens incrementally and slowly it shifts. You're going to find in Acts chapter, <clears throat> or 2 Timothy chapter 4, I'm sorry, in verse number uh, 3, 2 Timothy 4, 3, and I'm going to start in verse 1. It says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, yep, Rebuke, yes, exhort, uh huh, with all long suffering and doctrine, bring it with charity. Now it says here, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Now think with me just for a minute here. Uh, the flesh likes to be entertained. Why else am I up at whatever time it was when Texas is playing Southern Cal, right? I, it's, it's, it's carnal, isn't it? Amen? Let's call it what it is, right? But the flesh likes to be entertained. And if you're not careful, it gets into the house of God. And something you learn about that process is it never satisfies after a while. It has to be ratcheted up to another notch. So if you're not careful, folks, it gets into your life personally, amen? And before you know it, it can get into a church. So we may not like sometimes the, uh, the exercise of a Bible lesson or a Bible message, but understand we need it. Understand God exhorted Timothy and Paul and other preachers to bring the word, and not everybody's going to like it. 
Amen. Acts chapter number 17. If you look at me in Acts 17. Very quickly, Acts chapter 17. <clears throat> it kind of ends up like this in Acts chapter 17 at Athens here. In verse number 19. And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears, for we would know, therefore, what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers that were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. And boy, Paul, what is this you're talking about, huh? What, what's this? It meant something new. Again, let me reiterate, and let me, I, I hope the Lord makes this point clear. If you're not careful, it gets into a church. Amen. If you're not careful, the word of God becomes secondary. Well, Brother Doug, what experience do you have with that? When I'm out of town, which is occasionally, and maybe some of you do the same thing, I will visit different churches. Well, Brother Doug, you're just visiting to criticize. No, I visit sometimes different churches to learn and to be able to speak more intelligently, to observe what's going on in the churches of America today, so I can speak a little bit more intelligently about it. It's one thing to rail on things. It's another thing to criticize. But can I pray? I ought to do that. But you, you learn after a while that, wow, the scenery is changing some. And it's changing a lot. Are they going to have a Bible message at some point this morning? Amen? The last one I was at, it took a very long time to get to the Bible message. And it was very brief. There was a lot of things going on up to that and a lot of things after it. Again, let me reiterate. Let me... Let me I hope drive the point home or let, or let God drive the point home. Whether we like it or not, we need the word of God in our lives. If you want change in your heart and life, it's not going to come from ultimately the TV set. It's not probably going to come from the radio. It's ultimately going to come from the word of God and the working of the Holy Spirit in your heart and life. This matter of hearing, this matter of listening, test yourself today. Husbands and wives, ask yourself, hey, what was the lesson on? <laughs> I hope we get past today with that. Amen. I hope it gets through lunch. <laughs> well, what's the lesson on, huh? What? Can't hear you, honey. Right? Test yourselves. It's a good test. If, if you want to start off a conversation here to my left here and see where it ends up over here with Brother Craig, just and see how many times it changes by the time it gets to Brother Craig, it's because of what? We're poor listeners. Amen? So look with me in, a, in James chapter 1, if you would, please, very quickly. James chapter 1. Again, let every man be swift to hear. James chapter 1. This matter of listening, whether we like it or not, it takes some discipline. It takes some self-discipline. It takes a little bit of effort. Well, I don't like having to work at it. No, you have to work at it a little bit. Amen? You have to learn by the grace. Now, that's what I said. By the grace of God to focus. That means you have to sometimes turn that cell phone off. You have to set down all the other material maybe you brought with you, and you learn to focus. You wonder sometimes why the overhead projectors stuff, and I might be doing some of this in the future, is sometimes it's an effort to get God's people to simply focus. Amen? To focus. To focus. I have found also that if you write or take notes, or however, like we're doing in some of the other services, it helps you remember sometimes the lesson that you were looking at. It helps you bring back some of the scripture to, to mind here. But self-discipline, James chapter 1, if any man among you, verse 26, seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue and deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. We're speaking about the tongue here also, but listen, it takes some effort. It takes some work to learn to listen. Look with me in 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, if you would, please. 1 Corinthians, they say, well, Paul was a spiritual, spiritual giant. I believe he was, but it's because it was because of the Lord's working in Paul's life that he was used of God so mightily. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, look very quickly here in 1 Corinthians 9 and in verse number 24, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 says, Know ye not, that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. Every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Like it or not, listen, you have to learn to discipline the old nature by the grace of God. 
Well, I just can't listen that long, Brother Doug. I believe you can. Well, you're being real, real demanding. Well, no, listen. God, I can do all things through Christ with strength in me. If I care about the Bible and I care about the word of God, and I care about and I'm interested in getting something from it, I believe I can ask my heavenly father, I can put my shoulder to the wheel, so to speak. Lord, help me to be a good listener. Lord, help me to focus my attention. Lord, help to keep my mind from wandering. Yes, there's work tomorrow. Yes, I'm annoyed about where I'm going tomorrow to work. And yes, some of the people I work with are annoying, but maybe I'm annoying too. But how, Lord, for today, help me to focus today. Amen. Help me to leave the services today with something that could be put into my put into action immediately. Amen. Why not start being a good listener? You'd be surprised how, how long some of us been going to church. I mean, years and years and years and how much has been just dropped by the wayside. As soon as I walk out the door, sometimes the mind switches to something else. I've almost forgotten what was brought. God, help me to hide it in my heart. Lord, help me to be a good listener. It's learning to listen requires some self-discipline. Here's another one, which is maybe a little... Psalm chapter 46. Do you ever try to make decisions in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of storm, in the midst of emotional crisis? And it gets kind of difficult, doesn't it? it it's... I don't know about you, but I, I, need, I need a particular quietness. I need a stillness. I need time away from the chaos. Right? And again, let me reiterate. You're an ag, brother, with the phone thing. Turn the phone to silent. Amen? Turn the phone to silent. Ask God to help to filter out the extraneous noise going on around you. What it is, what are you listening for? The still small voice of the Lord. Amen. And oftentimes we're in the middle of, of, of a lot of things going on and a lot of, I call it, noise going on in our life. And we simply cannot hear God speaking to us. It's not that we don't want to. But we're so busy and we're so involved and there's so much going on. Amen. That the quick prayer to God, and then now I'll be listening for the Lord, is almost a joke in my life sometimes. Amen. Psalm chapter 46, verse 10. Look, look at the scripture with me here. It simply says this. Be still. Just be quiet. Amen. Take the time to be still. Shut everything off around you. Shut it out by the, by the grace of God and simply be still. I need to hear from the Lord. Amen. I hear a lot of voices sometimes, and I hear a lot of noise, and a lot of this, and a lot of that. But I'm trying to hear the still, small voice of God. So if you're in the middle of something right now that's, that's pretty serious in your life, and you're trying to figure out what God would have for you to do, I'll give you some advice. Ask God to help you filter out the extraneous noise so the only signal on the screen coming up is the voice of God. Amen. You say, Brother Doug, that's impossible. No, I don't believe it is. We do things by habit. If we're not in a habit of listening, amen, hello, you follow what I'm saying? Listening becomes a habit or, a, or we're not good listeners, a different type of habit, amen, a bad habit of not listening. When it comes to God, I want to hear from the Lord. Even in this lesson this morning, there's distractions, amen, there, there's, there are, will always be distractions, but we talked about learning to listen requires a certain level of discipline. It requires God's help ultimately. I can do all things through Christ. Amen. But it's going to also require a, a, a certain level of stillness or quietness. And I say that carefully because, well, how do you ever find a completely quiet spot? You, you, you figure this out. Amen. You know what I'm talking about. It says simply be still and look what it says here and know that I am God. I like how this, I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still. I mean, starting right off and know that I am God. I can help you with whatever's going on in your life if you just simply listen. Amen? It's going to require some discipline. It's going to require a stillness or quietness. In Ecclesiastes, very quickly here, in Ecclesiastes. Chapter 3. Look, look what Ecclesiastes 3 says.
There's a time, there's everything, there's a per season, a time to every purpose under the heaven in verse 1. Time to be born, three, a time to kill, a time to weep. Time to cast away stones in verse 5, a time to get, a time to lose in verse 6. But look what it says in verse 7. A time to rend and a time to sow. And then it says a time to keep silence and a time to speak. Now there's no better time to keep silence than when you need to, when you need to hear from your heavenly father. Now what, I like to put a little commentary on this. Sometimes if we would just learn to be quiet, amen, and quit talking, first of all. Amen. And, and learn to listen for the Lord, the still small voice of God. Now, here's what's exciting about that. When you get in the habit of it, of, of learning to listen, and you're actually concerned about what God has for you and what he has to say, it starts to become a little more in focus, and you start to hear a little bit more about what God wants for you, that still small voice of the Lord. Hey, Brother Doug, eh, try it. Amen. It's not how you feel that's going to change. Amen. It's not whether it's raining out or it's snowing. It's not whether this or that. It's you want to hear from the Lord. That still small voice of the Lord. As something else in closing here, a couple of scriptures here. This is probably gets a little tougher because I want to hear from the Lord. I hope you do too. But then I don't always like what I hear. <gasps> now come on. No, I don't want you to do that. Yes, I do want you to do that. Amen. No, I don't want you to go there. But you, I want you to go here. See, we can get it, we can get it figured out. We can discipline ourselves by the grace of God. We can uh, find even the quiet time to listen and get that figured out. But then it requires, guess what? A teachable spirit. Most of us, if we were honest and put me at the head of the line, we're rebels by nature. Amen. We're rebels by nature. Now me, brother. Doug. Oh, come now. Amen. Look with me in, in James chapter 1. It requires a teachable spirit. James chapter 1. Sometimes we simply cannot be taught, even though we're listening, because we're not hearing what we want to hear. So James chapter 1, in closing here this morning, James chapter 1, it says simply this. Wherefore, I lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Now that receiving with meekness, uh, we won't go back over everything this morning, but folks, you have to have a teachable spirit. It helps with the listening part. We're out of time this morning. I think we're close to being out of time. I try to get done a quarter till if possible. We'll come back to this by the grace of God next week. Challenge yourselves. What was the lesson on this morning? Did you get anything out of it? Ask God to help you with this matter of listening. He's got something for each of us today. Let's stand. We'll be dismissed with a word of prayer. Father, thank you, uh, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the folks out this morning. Help us to be good listeners, Lord. By your grace, help us to be good listeners. I know you've got something for each of us here this morning, Lord. Not just to be hearers, but then, Lord, the next part, help us to be doers. May your hand be upon the message, the service to follow. May Christ be exalted. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you to know and do his will today. God bless you each for being here this morning.